Let's go. At just five years old. Daddy. Yeah, they're coming. Willie Phipps. You say hi. Baba. iPad and stickers. Has the charm. Yeah. This is Willie's world. We just live in it. That's what I've said for like three years now. I'll bet you were really brave though, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Willie's mother, Leah, sees why he's so loved. We've had such an incredible support group. I know school's still going on, so there's a lot of people that didn't get to come. Oh, we need the key. Hi, Miss Amber. How are you? Who's on your shirt today? At every turn, Who's that? there's someone making sure Willie is looked after, but his circle is never complete without his best okay. friend. Oh, oh, yeah, JJ, 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 JJ Cole. <laughs> yeah, don't hit your head on the ceiling. I, I just see him. I just see such a, a powerful um, young little guy who's just so happy, full of joy. And cheese? You don't want to say cheese? Two years ago, we all saw this incredible friendship for the first time. The Ankeny High School superstar quarterback and gentle giant headed to Iowa State to play football and the three-year-old no, spark plug. No, no, no. Who had no quit in him. Willie was born with Down syndrome and at just three years old was fighting cancer as well. JJ started raising money to fight childhood cancer in Willie's honor. With a friend like that, Willie never went at it alone through the years. Every break we have, we've tried to see them and see Willie, whether it's for a, a couple hours, a couple minutes. It's really been a priority to see him whenever we can. The moms, Leah and Charlene Cole, they get it. It's neat to see when your adult children are making um, good choices in terms of investing in other people. When you do that, that comes back to you. And we're seeing that today in the two of them and how well they, they connect. There's just a, like innocence to it that, that I love to watch. I watch it develop and him come and take time from his busy life at Iowa State and come to visit us at the hospital. From Ankeny High School's football field now to Iowa State's gridiron, JJ and Willie continue sharing each other's worlds. He was up there for practice. Um, he met a bunch of the players, the coaches, Coach Campbell. I think he got a photo with Coach Campbell as well. Those coaches, they they live it out as well and are examples to these young men. And so JJ sees what that looks like on a daily basis. And on Willie's biggest day, JJ is alongside his best friend at Unity Point Health Blank Children's Hospital. Do you want to go ahead and ring the bell? Ring the bell, the bell. Ring it. Ring it. Oh, thank you all so very much for being here and being a part of the journey. And sorry, we just are so appreciative of how, um, how much you loved him as much as we loved him. Uh, this is really is Willie's day, and this has been a long time coming, and I'm just really happy for him and his family and everyone here and involved, and um, it's a big day for him. Oh, now we're really hamming it up. Years of hospitals, doctors, chemo. That was never Willie's game plan. I'm just looking forward to not having treatment anymore and uh, him getting to live like a five-year-old again. But he has the team to win regardless okay. of the challenges. In Des Moines, Chinu Her, Local 5 News. We'll try to uh, accommodate as much as we can, as long as we can. You know, I lock the doors at 4.30. We get the pots of stock on the, on the stove for gravy and whatnot. We get all the roasters full of ham and turkey scattered around the restaurant to start getting them warmed up. Pretty well ready for delivery between 9 and 9.30. Hopefully the first orders for delivery will go out 9.30, quarter to 10. If everything works well, we'll be doing carry out at 11, in-house dining at 11. Just the wonderful volunteers that give up part of their day or all their day to do this. It's amazing to me. We'll deliver 26, 27, 2800 meals. We'll probably serve 31, 3200 meals this year. 700 <laughs> meals, folks, 700. I've been involved 30 years. My personal goal was do as many meals as we can with the least amount of stress. First part was easy, the second part, not so much. I got it.
There's photos of me and Bob from the time that I was like three um, every Thanksgiving. And I'm honored that I get to continue to be a part of it and I wouldn't have missed this year for anything. 30th year. The gravy stalled out way quicker than I thought it would. I, I can't run with the big dogs like I used to, you know, uh, uh, getting around is a, you know, a fair amount harder for me than it was 30 years ago. 30 years is a good round number. Next few years are gonna be kind of different because I won't know what to do on Thanksgiving. I might actually get to watch a football game. <laughs> Tomorrow all the things were gone. Work for all my life. We're here to honor the lives of 12 men and, and two of their spouses, 14 people. Some that were left to sit on a shelf for reasons we may never fully know. I think my lucky star to be living here today. Today we proclaim that no veteran ever goes unclaimed. No veteran will sit on a shelf to collect dust. Today I thank each and every one of you for standing. We are now the family of these veterans. And I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. As we leave today, remember why we are here. As we load these men and women for their final escort, we're here to honor the 12 of our nation's veterans and two of their spouses. Remember when you hear taps later and hear the volley of the 21 gun salute, we're here to honor those 12 veterans that we now claim as part of our family. The quickest way to change the world is to be of service to others. To show that your love can make a difference in the lives of people and thereby somebody else's love can make a difference in your life. By each of us doing that and working together, we can change the world one inner person at a time. Tonight on Local 5, we're here from the Meskwaki Settlement, where we hear from a family who's been mourning the loss of their missing loved one for nine years. It's been over 3,200 days since Iris Roberts last saw her daughter Rita Papaki, but she remembers the first day Rita disappeared in 2015 like it was yesterday. And she said, just go drop me off at the casino. I said, okay, backed up, dropped her off in the front. What Iris thought was an ordinary day turned into the beginning of an extraordinary mystery. So she said, love you guys, I'll see you. And we said, see you, love you. Then she walked in to the casino and that was the last time we seen her. The Roberts called the police for help, filed a missing persons report, and waited patiently for days, weeks, and months, but received no answers. Then they had um, the FBI, DCI involved, and they were coming around at first, you know, trying, they said tried to find her, but. With the state and federal help, the search for Rita expanded, but despite additional resources, authorities could not find Rita. Her aunt, Ona Young Bear, feared the worst. I had a helicopter out once, and then I think it started to sink in, you know, that she was missing. After years with no results, Rita's case eventually went cold, leaving her family as the only people actively searching for their daughter. That's until November of 2022, when the Bureau of Indian Affairs told the family of its intention to revisit Rita's case. I said, well, at least somebody's showing an interest. New hope, a second look for answers that ended with the same results as the first search. They didn't really find anything anywhere, they said, so. The Roberts family has heard the rumors around the settlement about what may have happened to Rita, but nothing has been proven true. As for Ona Youngbear, she keeps praying her niece will come home. You know, because there are some people today that say, that they think she's been kidnapped and she's, you know, somewhere and and they feel that she's going to be found, but I don't know. Rita's aunt, mother, father, and siblings aren't the only family members carrying the burden of her disappearance. 
Rita had children. One of them was just six years old when his mother vanished. He used to bring stuff all the time, and he would say, put that away. When my mom comes back, we'll show her. But then eventually that quit. Along with the pain of loss, there is frustration that the Roberts family argues maybe more would have been done for others who aren't Native American. To me, they think that indigenous women don't matter. The U.S. data on missing and murdered indigenous women is often questioned by indigenous communities who believe the numbers may not reflect the truth of how prevalent these cases are. I mean, there's like thousands missing in Canada and nobody, you know, did anything about it. And like even here in the United States, it's like, you know, like Ira said before, it's like they don't care about these, you know, Native women. But the word is getting out with people raising awareness across the country to make sure Rita and other Native American women aren't forgotten. We went to Minneapolis. There's a lot of people that are marching that are non-Native. And no matter what has happened to Rita, her mother simply wants answers, closure, and the chance to properly say goodbye. Because there's still some stuff we have to do for her with our customs, our culture, that we have to do for her. That, and uh, my brother said we can't do it till we find her. This and the determined quest to find Rita, her family's cultural rituals and customs will wait. A testament to the profound connection between love and tradition. And even though it's been nine years, Rita Papaki's mother says she will never, ever give up hope and the search for finding her daughter. On the Meskwaki Settlement, Larissa Leone, Local 5 News.